a one, a two, ha. <laughs> I did the laugh. Ha. Ha. <laughs> oh my god. Transformer show, the podcast. I'm your host, the Frankster, and I'm here with my good buddy, the Arrow DJ Hart. And we are ready to talk about some awesome stuff. We got a cool main topic today. We are doing the Mount Rushmore of Autobots and Decepticons, who we each would put there. This should be interesting. I mean, there's one on each side that I know is going to be there. It can't be a Mount Rushmore without them. Nope. But it'll be cool to see who the others are. So. Let's go ahead and uh, get started so we can get to that. So let's uh, go into the weekly recap. And uh, DJ, how was uh, last week in the game for you? Well, I mean, it was an individual totalizer. Um, I think 10,000 points. So pretty easy, pretty chill, pretty laid back. Pretty much everybody will have finished that event and gotten the prizes, which, again, were worth grinding for. Um, except for the containers with Crim Zeke in it. I'm not big on the Crim Zeke. Um, <laughs> but other than that, excuse me. But other than that, it was it was good. You know, I think it was a good event for everybody. Quick, easy, painless, and those prizes were pretty good. I mean, there was a chance at Crimson Zeke, but I lucked out. Didn't get that many. I thought it was a blast of an event. Oh yeah, I didn't get the thousand five star shards though. I was yeah, I didn't. So the, the odds of that, if you had a hundred of those crystals, the odds would say you would get one. Right. So, I mean, the odds were against us on that. But I'm sure somebody out there hit it, and if you did, thumbs up to you. Oh, I know they did, because I I read a few people on Discord saying that they had gotten it and contributed to their five-star bot there. So It it would be amazing. That's a lot of shards to have in one thing. I mean, I got a lot of shards from the, uh, was it the white crystal? The white chip? There's Uh, a red, white, and blue. Yeah. And I believe the white one had the five star shards. I could be yeah, wrong. Yeah, one, one of them had five star shards. Sent like one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and like. half of the ones I cracked, I think I was one short of half where the four were the five star shards. Yeah, yeah. I was super happy about that. Didn't get much otherwise, but you know it is what it is. Yeah. Maybe this weekend we'll make up for it. There's still quite a few five stars I'm in the hunt for. So. Mm. All right. Well, not much to recap. Was like you said, individual event. So. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to throw it to DJ to do what it is that he does. And what it is that he does is the news. All right, everybody, here we are in the news. And our current weekend event is called Damage Control Unit. So this is an alliance totalizer with 500,000 points to be completed. On the line is 40 premium combat chips, 30 combiner crystals, a G Metal Core Power Core chip, and up to 6 gold Power Core chips, 150 combiner spark, and 200,000 com- uh, regular spark. And then, of course, we have uh, 2,500 four star shards, 7,500 three star shards, and up to 20,000 premium crystal shards. So, everything worth grinding for, at the very least, you walk away with some resources. So, you Battle zones are usual, and then here's the point breakdown right here. You see what you get and when. Love and, that it's half a mil, too. Yeah, ha- easy to do. Very easy to do. Yeah. Alrighty, so uh, the July survey is out, and five lucky winners will have a shot at 500 five-star shards. So uh, do the survey, tell Space Safe what you think, and get your name in the hat for those five-star shards. I know I did. We should increase the five-star shards there. Do more than 500. Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> I mean, we're giving 1,000 away in a chance at the last event. I mean, we could at least do 1,000 for that. I suppose. But that's <laughs> well, up. they're giving them away more frequently. That's what I'm saying. 
back in the day, 500 was a lot. It was, yeah. But now it's you get it more frequently. That's all I'm saying. Well, that's because there's a lot more five star bots now. So it's like yes. you have to try to make them more accessible. Uh, but ultimately, you know, if you want more than the 500, mention that in the comment section of the survey that you fill out. <laughs> um, and uh, leave it in the hands of the almighty ape from space. So. All right, the monthly gift say they hit a sneaky achievement in the game that you can claim this week uh, that will actually get you 10,000 Spark, Combiner Spark, Combat Spark, and a Silver XP Core. So um, it was called Cybertron's Gift. So your your achievement box will light up with an indicator on the top of your screen when you go into game. When you see that, tap on it, look, you'll see the Cybertron Gift. So it was kind of nice. All right, they're continuing to update the wiki, so be looking out for that. Make sure everything looks good. If you see an inconsistency or something that's incorrect, let Space Ape know, or let one of the content creators know so that we can let Space Ape know for you. Um, uh, the most recent inconsistency that I was aware of was that Grimlock was not listed as having an ability level 11 when, in fact, he does have one. Yeah, that uh, got fixed pretty quick. So. Yeah, so be next looking time up. I looked, it was up. So I was like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so be looking out for stuff like that. That's the only way they know if they've, you know, that they rely on us for those things. So make sure you're letting people know. We got new combat bots coming to the game. We're going to be getting Trip Up and Roller Force. And if I had to guess, I would say that they are going to be minion type bots because they appear to have vehicle alt modes. Looks like it. Yep, and uh, I bet you this guy will have a body style similar to Drag Strip or Mirage, just by looking at his right here. It looks Could like be, he's yeah. got like a pointy nose right there, so I'm thinking he's going to have something like that. And then this fella, can't quite tell because the way he's standing. But Hopefully uh, they have a cool ability because they had been knocking it out of the ballpark with some of these combat bots. Czar and Steeljaw particularly oh, I yeah. thought were amazing. I like them too. I still haven't got to try out the new uh, Melee combat bot they released. Uh, so I'm looking forward to trying him out when he gets released into the premiums. Yeah. So, all right. We got a couple of videos from our content creators that you're going to want to check out. So let's see here. All right, as they say, we love to share our content creator videos. Check out these new videos. This week, we're sharing Waz's video on recent Crazy Crystal opening nice pulls. So this is the Crystal Kraken that Wazlo did on uh, Monday of last week with his kids, and they yep. were uh, trying to predict what all he would get, and he got a bunch of cool stuff. So, all right, and then into our community corner. Uh, we have, of course, uh, we have a lot of stuff being posted by members of the community. Just awesome illustrations uh, from different players. And that appears to be a combiner. And I'm not entirely sure which one it is, but it looks pretty awesome. And he has a mean-looking staff. That is really awesome. Yep. Yeah. And then somebody, uh, this is supposed to be Star Saber, but it's all dark-looking with Decepticon badging. Nice. So maybe they painted it, or maybe this was like a shattered glass toy. I'm not sure. It looks custom to me. It looks like maybe they painted it because it's got the Decepticon logo, not the purple Autobot. Yeah, so. no, you're right, you're right. So, alrighty, and then Saga Schedule. We are now in week two of a five-week saga. So this is the Super XP event, 500,000 points. Next weekend will be the new combat, five-star combat shards, and one million points to complete that event. So good luck to everybody. And then that, ladies and gentlemen is the news all right well that was some pretty cool news i do like this weekend's event next week we got a uh, million point one so back to the normal alliance events we get a lot more millions than we do half mills so as a uh, dj eats him a little bit over there don't blame him i'm a little hungry myself i like the doritos <laughs> i do not blame you doritos are awesome well, all they're right not, well. they're not paying us though so i'm not going to show the bag on camera yeah yeah we're not sponsored unfortunately no no sponsorships maybe no. one day we'll get big enough that somebody out there will be like hey let's sponsor this show yeah we're working on it yeah <laughs> by working on it it means we're you know hoping for the future <laughs> but anyway i do believe it's time to look at last week's uh comments in the mailbag segment so dj if you want to take it away 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are in the mailbag, and our first comment comes from William Edward Heckman. I want to see Ratbat in the game. I think Graffy could be his Autobot counterpart. Ratbat and Graffy. Hmm. I'm not sure that I'm familiar with them. Are they... They sound like they might be Beast Wars bots from the uh, Japanese uh, Beast Wars, like Beast Wars Second and Beast Wars Neo. I feel okay. like that's who that might be. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. I should probably look it up, but uh, I'm not entirely sure who they are. Uh, let me know. Let us know in the comments below if you know who Ratbat and Graffy are and from what continuity they hail. Yep. Right. We'll definitely look it up this week so we can know next week who we're talking about. Yep. Yep. I'm not sure either. Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, I think I, the reason I say that is because the only Graffy sounds like the name of a giraffe to me. Yeah. And the only giraffe I know of in Transformers is from one of those two series. So, <clears throat> all right. And uh, our next comment comes from Bossman6774. Love this event. Great way to stock up on Spark. I could have done without all the Crimzeeks, though. I don't blame you. Nobody likes Crimzeek. Except I did have one guy comment on my crystal cracking that he actually likes the yellow crimson. That confused me. So, um, our next comment comes from William Wilkinson. Are you gonna say something, Frankie? Yeah, Brad Bat and their cassettes for Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know about them. I I knew of like Ravage and Rumble and. Well, you know, I knew he had a bat. Uh. I just yeah. forgot the name of I never it. Knew the, I never knew the name of it that I know of. Yeah. So what about Graffy? I, I just looked it up because I was curious, and I'm like, oh. So Graffy would be one for for Blaster then. Yeah, so okay. they'd be combat. So yeah, okay. That'd be interesting, yeah. Yeah, why not? Our next comment comes from William Wilkinson. As the botcast was coming on, I finished the 10K event. Easy. I'm going to start pulling crystals. Well, good luck, buddy. We hope you had a good crystal cracking. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right, our next comment comes from Volcanica69. I finished the event and got my 10th five-star bot, and it was Elita 1. Awesome sauce. Nice. That's, yes. yes, good good going, dude. That's amazing. All right. It was an easy event, and now uh, rating RSS. I did get 1,000 uh, five-star shards, and uh, that's how I got Elita 1. So that that's He's the one Double that told lucky. me. Yeah, he got, he's the one that got the 1,000 five-star shards from the event, and that got him his, his Alita. Okay. That's double lucky. That's yes. awesome. All right. I had enough spark to take her uh, to ability 8, and now just waiting on some more spark to take her to ability 10, then use the ability upgrade from Suffer Pass to take her to ability level 11. That's exactly what I would do, buddy. That's exactly yeah. what I would do. Good going. That's an, that's yes. an awesome bot. Yes, it is. So, Great for power leveling. Fantastic for that. Yeah. Once you get her leveled up. Absolutely. That's matter of fact, Elita One is the only four star Autobot that I have maxed out and because I use her for power leveling. So alright, our next comments come from Sunstreaker Waza. Alright, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> alright. Streetwise to complete Defense Sower and Vortex to complete Bruticus. Uh Ronox is the best Beast Wars bot without a doubt. Only Beast Wars bot on my war team. I don't blame you. Because I am I like Grunox myself, and I would not yeah. mind having him. I wouldn't mind having him at all. Um, but I do like I do like more of the Beast Wars bots than than, than Waza does. Uh, yeah. And that's just because I don't warn... And, and he's going to take a step down from Prime League. He mentioned that in one of his last streams. But yeah. I don't warn Prime League or, even, or Prime League hard or anything like that. So I'm okay with some of the bots that wouldn't necessarily be useful there. Because I do yeah. his event grinding with them. I'm still a big Cheetor guy because Cheetor with Amalgamus and Rat Trap is a powerhouse. Yes, war-wise, he's going to run ahead and get into trouble at Prime League level. But lower than that, I would say, if you're not in Prime League, I would say Cheetor is the best. If you're in Prime League, you would probably say Rhinox. Yeah. Um, so He's just great for, first of all, if you set, if you had... By himself, he can solo a zone 13, zone 14 base. Yeah. Um, but with a squad, I mean, he'll just be wreaking havoc while the squad is over here doing this and, and basically causing a distraction. I mean, it's yeah. just he's really good to have on an event grinding squad. 
So. Yeah, you get really high up, though, and even with Amalgamus, he doesn't last as long as you need him to. Like, even Amalgamus isn't in his natural healing, but his ability aren't enough to keep him alive at, like, prime league hard level. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying at that level, Rhinox probably would be the better choice. Yeah, and I'd, I'd, he's, the, he's one of the only other uh, Beast Wars bots that I'd like to have as a five-star just because of how amazing he is. So. But even at that level, like bots like Cheetor and Alita that they don't use <clears throat> in Prime League hard, they're still amazing to power level with. Oh, for sure. So they still have a use. They're just not war team use. Right. So, yeah. So. Yep. All right, uh, Ushno King says, i like to see the Headmasters come into the game. We have some, but they're not Headmasters. Yeah, he's right. So, yeah. the, like, the like the apes have been asked several times, I think before the advent of combat bots, were we going to bring Headmasters into the game? Were we going to bring Target Masters into the game? Um, Mini cons. Yeah, that's basically what they were looking for. And the, the answer to that were the combat bots. So... And essentially, they're doing exactly what headmasters and target masters were do. They, like the headmasters, was a little bit different. In like, I don't remember them. They created another bot on the field. Like if if your transformer went into vehicle mode and the combat bot went into or the uh, headmaster went into robot mode, it basically just created like a teamwork aspect to it. And the generation one season three episode, the rebirth, didn't do a great job of explaining how that would work. Um, yeah. I think they went into a lot more depth into it in the Japanese show Transformers the Headmasters, which yeah. I have not seen, so I can't comment on how well that would work in a game. But essentially, I feel like combat bots are the right answer for that. I mean, we got bots that can be equipped as blasters, equipped as melee weapons, companions. Um, you know, I think they're doing what they need to do. So... Uh, our last comment comes from Lord Abix. Transformers South Park crossover. I know it makes no sense. I just love South <laughs> <laughs> That would be hilarious. I doubt Hasbro would do it because South Park's so adult themed. Yeah, that, that is it, funny though. It would be hilarious. It really would. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that at all. I'm sure <laughs> there's a South Park episode with Transformers in it because they yeah, spoofed there has to everything. Be. You know? Yeah, and there's been enough of those live action movies now that surely one of them came out, and South Park found a way to mix that with whatever another topic of the day was at the time, yeah. and just make a crazy episode. So. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, well, that anyway. would be a good crossover. Like, I don't even know how you would do it, but it would be hilarious. I know for sure. I know it. All right. Well, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for commenting. Please keep them coming. We want to hear from you. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, that is, has been the mailbag segment. All right. Well, like DJ said, thank you all for the comments. We, we love hearing from you. We love engaging with the audience. Maybe one day we'll be able to live stream and actually live interact with people. If I can get my words right. Yeah, but we do enjoy it. Keep on commenting. Uh, We'll make sure we read all of them until there's so many that we can't read. And then at that point, I don't know what we'll do, but we'll figure it out. We'll like an hour long show. Yeah. We'll just have a show called, we, we'll have the podcast, and then we'll have a separate show called The Mailbag. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we'll call it the Mini Botcast Mailbag Edition. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Time for the main topic, and this is going to be interesting. Probably no one out there is going to agree with all our picks, but that's fine. Uh, be sure, you know, comment your choice for your Mount Rushmore. So we're going to do one of each, and we are going to allow if somebody wants a Maximal on the Autobot side or a Predacon on the Decepticon side, because they're related. So we're going to do an Autobot Mount Rushmore, Decepticon Mount Rushmore, um, so DJ, I'll let you start. Um, how, how would you like to do it? You want us to do the Autobot one first, then go to Septicon, or uh, one from each until we get through it? Yeah, let's just do, let's finish out one mountain and then start the next mountain. Sounds good to me. All right, well, who would be the first bot on your Autobot Mount Rushmore? All right, the first Autobot on my Mount Rushmore that I will carve with my hammer and chisel. Uh, you just picture That's gonna a take hammer a while. and chisel. Yeah, that's how they did it. Well, that and I think I Dynamite was involved. Um, they have more than one person, though. Y yeah. Um, the first one that I'm going to put on there will be Dinobot Maximals. Oh, 
Oh, your first one. First one's Dinobot. Dinobot uh-huh. is a amazing character in Transformers lore. Yes. He was he went from being a Predacon to being a Maximal to being kind of caught between both, trying to decide, you know, just 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 answering a lot of questions about fate and you know being able to change your path and all kinds of things. He was a great character. The guy who originally did his voice did a fantastic job with the character. Um, and then he went out like a boss. I mean, he just went out like a freaking hero. The guy was amazing. And he was also the very first Transformer voted to be in the Transformers Hall of Fame. Yeah. Dino no, is- he had the best <clears throat> character arc of any Transformer ever. He did. Like, the only one I can even think of that even would come close to rivaling it is Starscream and Armada. Yep. Armada Starscream was great, but Dinobot, he's got to be the king of long-form story arc, satisfying, deep. He's such a great character. He's always been my favorite of the Beast Wars characters. Yep. And he's rivaling uh, for my favorite Autobot of all time. He wasn't the first one I wrote down, but he was on my Mount Rushmore as well. So. <laughs> like, I was surprised you said it, but when you did, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I thought that was one that I just had. Because <laughs> he's so good. He's so cool. I love his design. Yeah. Like, whoever designed him, that's just brilliant. Dinobot's amazing. Yeah, they did a good job with him all the way around. Yes, they did. Raptor, who doesn't love Raptors? Raptors are cool. Who doesn't love Raptors? I'll tell you who doesn't love Raptors. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> he doesn't love dinosaurs in general. At least not in Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, since we both had that one, uh, I know there's at least one more we both have to have. I know it's going to be there. But I'll send it to you for your uh, second one since you, you already grabbed one of mine. All right, so for my second one, oh, God. I'm This one, I'm kind of torn between this one and another one. I'm going to... Mm, Mm. You only get four. All right, you, all right. Let I, I still need to think on it a little bit more. Go back. Let's do your number. Your number two pick here. All right, my number two pick is this one's going to be controversial, but I don't care because he's my favorite. Period. It's Hot Rod. I knew I he was going to be Rod. on your list. Yes, Hot Rod is there. I know a lot of people don't like him. In my defense. Transformers the movie was the first thing in Transformers I ever saw, the animated 80s movie. It was the only G1 I saw actually as a kid because none of the channels I lived at showed reruns of the uh, original show. And Hot Rod, just he always spoke to me. I loved him. You know, he was the, the brash, you know, running headfirst youngster that ended up being the one to open the Matrix and stop Galvatron. He did kind of screw up and get Optimus shot, but he was he was well intended. He was trying to do good. He just, you know, it happens. It's part of his arc though, because he had to carry that. He had to carry the weight of being a leader when he didn't really know how to be a leader or even want to be a leader, which is probably what made him the best choice. He didn't want it. I always loved his story, like in the in season what three, three uh, of of yeah. the show, you know, because one and two, then the movie, yeah. So season three, when I got older and got to watch through that season, it just made me like Hot Rod even more. Because as Rodimus, the way the weight of leadership weighed him down, and he didn't really want the responsibility, but he had to take it on, that just made me love that character even more. Because he had depth that a lot of the other G1 characters in the cartoon didn't have. You know, he wasn't one-dimensional. He was was pretty deep. So Hot Rod's always been my absolute favorite Autobot. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame you. I can see that. I mean, he's definitely been underused by pretty much yeah. every every uh, piece of media that's had him out there. So I and would Michael like Bay him. absolutely ruined putting yes, him in. Yes, that was absolutely say. terrible. I swear to God, he might. He, oh God! Like they basically made Bumblebee the hot rod of that movie series, and then when they brought Hot Rod in, they were like, "Well, what do we do with him? We've already made Bumblebee hot rod. You make a better hot rod." Yeah, you That's could. You yeah. hot rod. You I know, but I'm just saying, guy. I know what their thinking was. It was just dumb. But, you know, it is what it is, so. Yeah. So who, uh, have you come up with who your number two is? Yes, I think? have decided on my number two, and my number two is Armada Starscream. 
That actually would work because he did jump sides, didn't he? He did. He jumped sides halfway through uh, one of the, uh, the first or second season. Now, he didn't jumping back to Decepticons, but he was torn about it the whole way through. And then he went out, He again, just like Dinobot, went out like a hero at the end of his arc. Now, granted, in Transformers, Cybertron and Energon, they brought him back and kind of ruined him. But if you just look at season one, Armada by itself, Starscream had the best character arc all the way through. Um, he was probably my favorite take of Starscream because he wasn't the cowardly, sniveling, backstabbing you know, Starscream that we all know and love. This was a Starscream that all, all he wanted was to be respected by his peers and by his superiors. And uh, he also found himself questioning what he was doing, why he was doing it. He's a great, he's a great take. And he went out, just like I said, he went out like a hero just as much as any other Autobot would have. So, yeah, he's on my Mount Rushmore. I actually see that. I do. Like, I never thought about putting him as an Autobot because I just associate <clears throat> Starscream with Decepticons. But you're right. He is more fitting that iteration is more fitting on the Autobot side. And it was, like I said, second best Transformers character arc of all. Only Dinobot, I think, surpasses him. So yeah, I definitely I definitely see that. I like that pick. That is a that is a good pick. Thank you. All right. So on to the third pick for my Autobot Mount Rushmore. And I'm gonna save the most obvious pick for last. Just, just personal preference there. Unless the DJ wants to pick it as his third one, and then we'll, we'll have it all out the way. <laughs> but uh, I'm actually going to go with one that I feel like has earned this spot on the Mount Rushmore in more recent years, and that's Bumblebee. Because he has really become as a, the second most recognizable face of Transformers. He really has. When they... He was always, like, a lot of kids' favorite, even back in the day. But then they started making him, like, he was more the the Transformer you followed narratively in the Bay movies. Yeah. To the point where he even got his solo movie. I mean, he was more the central point of it than Optimus, especially the first one. And just a lot of people have really become Bumblebee fans, I feel. Like, he's one of the more popular ones now. And I think not only the movies, but a lot of the more recent animated series have also put a focal point on Bumblebee, including Transformers Prime, right? He uh, was a big... He was a big... Yeah, he was there. He was part of the central cast, but he didn't become like the center of attention until the sequel series, Transformers Robots in Disguise. Yeah, but I thought, yeah, at some point, like, I'm, I'm not as big on Prime as you are. I've watched through it once and the other one a little bit. But I thought he became a pretty big deal. He... So he started off, he was just another member of the crew. The show did a good job of making sure everybody got the spotlight periodically throughout the show. Yeah. Um, but Bumblebee didn't take center stage until... Like, they did do a big deal where at the at the end of uh, season three, <clears throat> uh, in the middle of like the climactic battle, Megatron turned and blasted him and just you know, just destroyed him, like killed him on the spot. And Optimus went ballistic. He started like just way laying on. Yeah. On that I remember that, that scene big. Like I say it was, it was way back when it first aired when I watched through that. So. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was probably the biggest like deal they made of Bumblebee at that point. Yeah. Um, but, and of course he came back and like, he was the one that killed Megatron and so yeah. I remember him killing Megatron. Yeah. yeah. So I'm saying a, I feel like I feel like just in recent years he's really become a huge part. He has, but he didn't take center stage of that particular continuity or universe until Transformers Robots in Disguise, where he came back to Earth as the leader of his own team, which introduced a couple new characters and brought back a few classic characters we hadn't seen in a while. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just I think he's earned a spot on the team just because he's now become one of the most recognizable one to people that don't know much about Transformers. They'll automatically know who Bumblebee is. Me. And that's mostly due to the Bayformers movies, which to be fair, he's one of the best parts of those. I love I've never been a Bumblebee guy, but I like the Bayformers Bumblebee, which I think it's because there's a lot of elements of hot rod in him. I think is why I like him so much. Yeah. But I do like that version. I like that he's the Camaro. 
that makes sense. He should be a Beatle, but which is why you know, the Bumblebee worked. movie was, and that's where I like Bumblebee. I like him yeah. in his own movie as the Beatle. That made perfect sense. I like that a lot, and I yeah. enjoy watching him kill Decepticons in the other movies. Don't get me wrong, but again. Like you, I think the reason I like it is because it reminds me of what Hot Rod should be. Yeah, exactly. There were a lot of elements of Hot Rod. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, but I'll I'll put Bumblebee on there. I think he's earned a spot from recent years. So, Well, based on the discussion that we have just had, I will not be putting Bumblebee on my Mount Rushmore because that spot should have been Hot Rod's. And I'm not even putting I'm not even putting Hot Rod on my Mount Rushmore. I like Hot Rod a lot. I do, but he's not going on my Rap Rushmore. Mm <clears throat> so, anyway, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out our other two picks because I like. Is that was your? You got one pick left, right? I got one left. Yes, and it's obviously the most obvious. Yeah, one. it's Optimus Prime. It so, is, of course. Yes. It is. Yeah, which is my pick as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and slap that one up there. Uh, why are we um, picking Optimus Prime? Because he's Optimus <laughs> Prime. That's yeah, what, yeah, there's why like, else you do you? You don't have to go in depth on that one because you know. he's the most iconic. The definitive, and in recent years, he's apparently become a Ghostbuster. For the record, this is the version of Optimus Prime going up on my Mount Rushmore. You can oh. have the regular red and blue one. <laughs> you know what? I would love to see Optimus Prime interact with Peter, Ray, Egon, and Winston. Could you imagine the jokes they would make? Well, we do see it. It's in a uh, it's in a crossover comic book. Yeah, I'd so like to, to read see it. actually, like, actually, like, visual, though, where it would be, like, it would be hilarious. Probably. Bill Murray having to act beside Optimus Prime. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Optimus, like I said, it's obvious. That you, we don't really have to get into the details of it. If he it's is Optimus Transformers. Prime. Yeah, it's that's, that's yeah. all it is. He's been the face of the franchise for decades. And yes. will probably continue to be so. So. All right, so you got one more left, sir. So I do have one more left, and my one more is going to be Optimus Primal from Beast Wars. I like Primal a lot because, first of all, he didn't have the well-oiled machine of loyal Autobots that Prime had. He had nope. this crew of mis- mis- misfits. You know, they were on a survey. They were not the ones that were supposed to be on that mission. They were just the closest ones, so they had to. So not only is he an inexperienced leader, it's it, you know what it kind of reminds me of down periscope. That's pretty much what he was dealing with. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah, because he had rat trap and oh my god, yeah, rat, rat trap. Was something yeah, else. and then Dinobot joined the crew, and he's all the time trying to eat rat trap <laughs> for so, good reason. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, and that's why I like Primal. He was dealing with that. He had to grow as a leader and as a maximal. And then his constant rivalry with Megatron was really good. Uh, just, you know, almost as good, if not better, than the rivalry between Prime and the original Megatron. But yeah, I like him a lot. He goes on my Mount Rushmore. There's a lot more you could do with him, and I wish they would do it. I think that uh, the most recent Netflix series did not do the Beast Wars justice. No. Uh, it looked good, but the execution was missing a few steps. And whoever that... I didn't, I mean, no. Yeah, no, well, the newer Transformer stuff, even Combiner Wars and all that, they threw everything at the show. Like, because they, they would do the toy lines, but they'd have these very short-run shows to promote it. Yeah. And they would just throw everything in there, however they could, to get it all in the show. And it just, it was an overload of too much. You know, I mean, they're, they're entertaining, but they're also not as good as they could be because instead of focusing on a core group of characters, they throw everybody in there and just rush through the story, it feels like, too. So Yeah. To be fair, Power of the Primes Optimal, or uh, Optimus Primal was actually really good. Yeah, he was. It, I, first of all, the voice was good. Ron Perlman did an amazing job as his voice. I really, th- I really liked it. Um and then later on, and then he actually gets the Matrix and becomes the Optimal Optimus there at the end, and he goes toe to toe with uh, Rodimus Unicronus there. I mean, that was I liked it. I mean, it was a lot of fun to watch. So it was different, but it was fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just I'm not a fan of those series where they just they they throw too much in it. But now War for Cybertron Siege, that was really good. But after that, they just kept adding more and more characters until by the the final part of the trilogy, it was just too much. Mm. It's like an overbooked wrestling show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, but uh, all right. So there we go. Uh, my uh, Mount Rushmore for Autobots was Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Hot Rod, and Dinobot. And you, sir, had uh, Dinobot, um, Armada, Starscream, yep, Optimus Prime, yep, and Optimus Primal. Which yep. I love the choice of Primal. I love him. Yep. Like I had him on my list, but it was him or Dinobot, one or the other. And I was like, Dinobot just had a better story. He did. But Primal was such a great leader, so I don't blame you at all for putting him on there. I don't. Yep. All right, well, it is Decepticon Mount Rushmore time, so uh, you want to lead us off on this one? Megatron. I I had the same thing. That's the <laughs> obvious one. That's the one that's got to be there. Yeah, you may as well just throw that out there. Just make The leader of the Decepticons. He's amazing. He's a great villain. Yep. Just Everything about Megatron as a Decepticon is on point and awesome. Yep. So no more needs to be said about that. Nope. So uh, who you got for number two? Starscream. I mean, he stole my number two. <laughs> it's like this. It's like who? What? You can't have a Decepticon Mount Rushmore and not put Starscream up there. You can't because Starscream. He was one of my favorite Transformers. Period. As a kid, yep. Because yep. he cracked me up constantly, trying to like sneak around behind Megatron's back and take over. And then continuously getting caught. And then when he finally yeah. went too far, Megatron had done had enough and was just like, "Here's a hint." Pow! Then he, then he comes back as a ghost. He's even in Beast Wars. That was so amazing. Yeah, possessed Waspinator. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, Starscream is a great character, though. Even before Armada made him deep and interesting, yep. the Starscream of G1 was still awesome because he was just constantly scheming. Yep. And I'll never forget, because the first Bayformers movie, when I saw it in theaters, I, like, when it got to where Starscream and Megatron ran each other, and the first thing Megatron says to him is, you failed me yet again, Starscream. I was like, marking out in the theater, like, yes! <laughs> I was yeah. like, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, Starscream, that's a good pick. So uh who you got for number three? Number three for my Decepticon uh list is Beast Wars Megatron, but yeah. only the version voiced by David K. <laughs> Classic Beast pick. Wars Megatron. Because that is a very good pick. Everything about that guy is awesome. First of all, he's a T Rex. That's awesome. Okay, his robot mode looked oh, just looked great. The, the voice is spot on with the way the character just looked and acted. And and then he, he was such a good, just Predacon leader. I mean, he was he was clever. He was strong. Um, he, had, he was a great tactician. But he had silly things, too, like his rubber ducky he was all the time playing with. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, from time to time, you'd see him in robot mode on his throne, brushing the teeth of his, of his hand. <laughs> T-Rex he's brushing his teeth. Yeah. And then sometimes be looking at it like he's having a conversation with it. And it looked like he was looking back up at him. It was creepy. Yeah. And he always go, yes. Yes. That's the best thing ever. It's a yes. Yeah. Yeah, see, I can't do it good. You can. He's, uh-oh, here we go. He's got the Tyrannicon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, you do it perfect. Yeah, he's... He is a great character. He's not on mine, but he was the first alternate. So so he was like last one eliminated from contention for me. So Beast Wars Megatron's great. My next one is Soundwave. Really? Yes. Because when I think Decepticons, the first image that pops into my head and the first sound that pops into my head is Soundwave. He had that distinct voice. He had all the cool little minions. Like, I was never big on Blaster. I always thought Soundwave was, like, so much cooler than Blaster. Yeah, because Blaster was just sort of thrown in there as an equivalent for the sake yeah, of Yeah, and that one. voice, like, his voice was so good. Like, it was so distinct. Yeah. It's like he didn't have to be on camera for you to immediately know who it was talking. Yeah. And, like, they even perfected that 
and de used the original voice actor for the Bayformers, which I thought was amazing. They still ruined the character. They had my satellite. Yeah. Don't ask me why. But as soon as I heard that voice, I still couldn't help but like be like, yes. <laughs> He's in such an iconic voice. He's such a cool looking character. And even his minions were cool. Ravage stayed a big deal. Even in Beast Wars, he like had like a full robot body and was like a bounty hunter. Yeah. I, so, I, mean, I like that. Yeah, Soundwave's legacy. And he had a Russian accent on. for some reason. Like I said, I, I think Soundwave deserves to be there. I really do. He's just too cool. Everything about him is cool. And that's why he's on my list. Well, he should have a bandana. <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> the Shattered Glass Outway, this is a really cool redesign. Yeah. All right, so who you got as your fourth and final Decepticon on your Mount Rushmore? I don't know. Oh, going to uh, throw it to me while you think? I need more time to think. So let's just go ahead and skip mine and go into your number four pick. All right, my number four pick, and probably no one else out there will agree with me, but I don't care because I love this character, and he deserves to be on a list of best Decepticons slash and or Predacons, and that is Waspinator. <laughs> I love me some Waspinator. He's hilarious. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Waspinator is awesome. That's awesome. I I love how he ends up at the end of Beast Wars, like before, like not the end of Beast Machines, but Beast Wars. Yeah. When that one ends and like his head's there, like all the people are like worshiping him. Yeah, yeah. Waspinator's the man. That, that he, was he's so good. cool. And he's always like, why Waspinator? Like every time something <laughs> bad happens, he gets blown up so many times in that show. Wow. He's hilarious. He always had me cracking up as a kid. And I can't help it. Waspinator's on the Mount Rushmore because he's just he just deserves it to me. Yeah, I won't take that. I won't take anything away from him on that. <laughs> so all right. All right. Yeah, so now have you finally decided on your fourth Decepticon? Yes, I have decided on my fourth Decepticon. And my fourth Decepticon is another insect uh 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 bot. Um <laughs> it also has six legs, but this one is fond of fire. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. My bot is going to be. As soon as you said insect, I knew it. Inferno. Yes. And because he was just awesome. He came in and he's just like, he's all the time like, burn. You know, it's like, he was crazy. And then he's all the time calling calling uh, Megatron my queen and the royalty and all that kind of stuff. And at one point, Megatron's even like, please stop calling me that. Inferno was amazing. He was one of the best additions to that show. I thoroughly enjoyed having him on every time. And then he made it, and he was tough as nails without getting a transmetal upgrade. Yeah. So he got all the way to the end of the show before he finally got put down, and they were using his head as a drum by the natives while Lost yeah. was up on his throne being worshipped and fanned. Yeah. Lost is awesome. But Inferno was... I he was good, no. A lot. Inferno, I loved him calling Megatron my queen, and like it annoyed Megatron so much, it was great. Yeah, he recently got a. He's getting a toy. He got a toy in. Um, I don't think it was in the Beast Wars, uh, in the uh, Kingdom line. I think it's going to be in the Legacy line. Cool. Yeah, and it looks good too. I've seen images of it. Yeah, he he was a good character, and he was so OP too. That was the thing. He was like a really powerful. Beast Wars Transformer, and then his beast mode, like, overrode, like, part of his, you know, his personality. Yep, yep. So that's why he was all, like, crazy. Yeah, he thought he was an actual ant in a hive. Or a bee, yeah. Or, a, or an ant, <laughs> uh, ant hill. Oh, so, man. But so many nuts. good characters in Beast Wars. It's it's It was so great. Yeah. If anybody out there can't tell, we definitely grew up on Beast Wars. I know oh, yeah. I did. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that was a great show. Even now, go back and watch it. The animation's a bit outdated, the CGI animation they did, but the stories are timeless. It's so great. So much deeper than G1, really. I mean, a lot deeper, and it's just a great show. I know a lot of you are diehard G1 people, and I get it. I'm a diehard Beast Wars guy, so. Looking at you, Waza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, for... 
but yeah, I mean, those of you who who did not give it a shot, um, go back, watch it. Just and you don't have to go back and watch Beast Machines if you don't want to, because I still haven't. But go back it's, and just watch season one of Beast Wars. Just watch season one. And if you're not intrigued by the characters and the story and just everything that's going on, then don't watch any more. But I'm telling you, if you're you'll get you'll want to watch the whole way through. It gets better and better as it goes along, and then eventually ties into G one very very well. Because when we get the transmetal tubes, yeah. Um, I will defend Beast Machines though. As a kid, I couldn't stand it. I thought it was boring. Rewatching it as an adult, when I got it on the series on DVD, it's so much deeper than I ever like realized as a kid. It's it's really good. It's not as good as Beast Wars. But it's a really good sequel show, and it finishes wrapping up the character stories that didn't get finished. The only thing is, what they did with Rhinox was terrible. It really was. But other than that, Beast Machines is actually like 100 times better than I remembered as a kid, because I quit watching it as a kid, because I'm like, this is boring. What is this? Yeah. But then watching it as an adult, I'm like, wow, this went right over my head and probably every other kid watching's head because it, it was deep way deeper than a kid's show had any business trying to be yeah which is probably why it failed yeah so, probably yeah all right well there you have it those are our mount rushmore's please uh comment and tell us what yours are tell us if you think we're right tell us if you think we're wrong pretty sure hot rod and waspinator are gonna have a bunch of people railing against them but you know <laughs> that's fine I, I expect that but I Hot Rod's my favorite and Waspinator's awesome. So there it is. <laughs> all right. Well, that is pretty much it for this week's episode. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I'll keep doing the daily updates on the weekend event, at least until my alliance finishes it. And my Crystal Kraken will be up probably Monday morning. And DJs will have his up at some point. Uh, I don't know. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, well, it'll be there at some point. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Probably, probably if knowing me, probably Wednesday, <laughs> because I I'm not gonna get around to it on Monday. I got Tuesday's toys coming up this week, which stay tuned for this episode of Tuesday's Toys. It's gonna be a good one. There you go. I eagerly anticipated. Those are some pretty cool videos with some neat toys. Uh, Power Rangers is awesome. So yeah. Well, this probably go around, the... we're getting back into Transformers. Ooh, nice. So yep. Transformers once again. Yep. I didn't yep. even know you had any more Transformers. Yeah, I do have another one that I'd like to showcase that I meant to get around to a year ago. And uh, it was around the time I started moving into my house. So it just kind of got put on the back burner and I finally finished it. So cool. uh, look out for that this Tuesday. It'll be another Transformers collaborative. Nice. Awesome. Well, I eagerly anticipate that. Now I think I know which one you're talking about, I think. But we will see on Tuesday if I am right. And so we will see y'all later. Same bot time, same bot channel. Frank Stir out. Yeah.